Mrs. Blacksmith consulted her attending physician after experiencing an episode of fatigue, and the latter concluded it was necessary to do blood tests. You have just begun your shift at the blood sample laboratory, and Mrs. Blacksmith comes to see you for a venipuncture. The laboratory technician verifies the types of samples to be taken and their particularities in the patient's file and ensures that the request and identification labels are completed. She performs a double check with the patient to avoid errors and find out if the patient has allergies. Good morning, Mrs. Blacksmith. Hi. Hi, my name is Cynthia. I'm the lab tech. Okay. Okay, could I have your full name, your date of birth? Yes, please? my name is Audrey Blacksmith, and I was born August 9th, 1953. Perfect. And do you have any allergies? Uh, no, not that I know of. Oh. Wait, I don't remember any. I don't think so. And can I use this arm? Yeah, sure. No problem with mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Okay, we're just going to need to... Pull up my sleeve. Yeah, pull up the sleeve a bit. Okay. The laboratory technician must make sure the patient does not have any contraindications relative to the puncture site. For example, signs of infection or an arteriovenous fistula. The technician ensures that she has the right tubes for the request and that they are placed according to the recommended order of collection. She then performs the following steps. She makes sure the patient is well positioned and comfortable, yeah. and she checks for a good size and straight vein. Knotted and indurated veins must be avoided at all costs. She chooses the needle gauge according to the vein size. She then checks the site where she will perform the puncture and places an underpad under the patient's arm. Oh, okay. The elbow crease is the appropriate place for a blood sample. Yep. It should be noted that the work surface yep. must have been disinfected before the arrival of the patient. She then washes her hands with a hydroalcoholic solution and puts on a pair of non-sterile gloves of the right size. She places the tourniquet at a distance of 10 centimeters from the chosen site and tightens it enough so that the veins become bulging. Placing the tourniquet too close to the vein to be punctured could cause it to burst. If the veins are not sufficiently visible or palpable, the following actions are indicated. Have the patient close the fist and clench it. Lower the arm below the level of the heart or place a warm compress on the site. The laboratory technician must be careful not to leave the tourniquet on the arm for more than 60 seconds, as this will cause hemolysis of the red blood cells, which will distort the results of the sample. The laboratory technician disinfects the site with 70% alcohol and chlorhexidine swabs in a circular motion from the center to the outside and waits until the solution is completely dry, minimum 30 seconds, before proceeding. There is no need to wave your hand, blow, or do anything else, as this would contaminate the area. She then stabilizes the vein by stretching the skin under the puncture site. She introduces the needle by pointing the bevel upward at a 30 degree angle during insertion and lowers the barrel and needle so that they produce a 15 degree angle with the skin. With the non-dominant hand, she stabilizes the barrel and inserts the tube into the barrel. She makes sure to push the tube to the bottom of the barrel using wings so as to pierce the membrane. When only one tube is required, loosen the tourniquet when the blood tube begins to fill. When more than one tube is required, wait for the first tube to fill and then loosen the tourniquet. Then remove the tube and insert the next one using exactly the same technique as for the first one. The laboratory technician must make sure each tube is filled up correctly and gently invert them once they filled up. At the end of the procedure, she removes the last tube and then puts a gauze over the needle and the puncture site and finally removes the needle all the while maintaining a pressure on the gauze. She closes the safety cap over the needle as recommended by the manufacturer and then disposes of it in the biohazard container 
and puts the remainder of the material into the trash can. Okay, so you can press Upon completion of the procedure, yeah. she ensures blood sample integrity, okay. makes press. sure okay. they are properly identified, and assures full compliance with the storage and transportation requirements of the establishment. So it's all done. It's all done. Wow. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Thanks. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Thank you.